Welcome to a new episode of How to Argue Like a Decent Human Being. In all future episodes, a basic understanding of logical concepts such as validity and soundness will be presumed. So if you haven't got a clue as to what these words mean, click the link in the description to find the series playlist. In episodes starting with the number 3, we will look at some of the formal logical fallacies. A formal fallacy is an error in the form of deductive reasoning. That is, an invalid argument where true premises may lead to a false conclusion. In episode 3.1, you will learn about two of the most famous formal fallacies, namely affirming the consequent and denying the antecedent. These fallacies concern arguments that contain conditional statements. Before we delve into these fallacies, however, we need to make a brief detour to define what a conditional statement is. Conditional statements are in the following form. If P, then Q. Or alternatively, P implies Q. The statement P is called the antecedent, whereas the statement Q is called the consequent. In formal logic, this relation may be represented by the right arrow or the superset symbol. A conditional statement in this form is true in the following three cases. 1. P and Q are both true. 2. P is false, but Q is true. And 3. P and Q are both false. In other words, a conditional statement is true unless P is true while Q is false. The logical operation that follows this rule is called the material conditional. The material conditional has some counterintuitive properties and must therefore be distinguished from the conjunction if that we use in everyday language. In order to see the peculiar properties of the material conditional, let's examine each of its three truth conditions. One should be pretty straightforward. Consider the conditional statement, if it is raining outside, then the ground is wet. You look out the window and see it is indeed raining. Therefore, the antecedent is true. You also see that the ground is wet. Therefore, the consequence is true. In this case, you should have no problem saying that the conditional statement as a whole is true. So far, so good. 2 and 3, on the other hand, can be very counterintuitive. Consider the conditional statement. If 1 plus 1 is 3, then Paris is the capital of France. Recall that rule number 2 asserts that the antecedent can be utter nonsense as long as the consequent is true. Therefore, according to this rule, this statement is true, even though most people would reject it as baloney. Similarly, the conditional statement, if 1 plus 1 is 3, then 2 plus 2 is 5, is true, according to rule number 3, which states that the truth of the consequent doesn't matter, as long as the antecedent is false. Again, this statement would be deemed absurd by most people. Naturally, these peculiar properties of the material conditional can cause misunderstandings when engaging in an argument with someone who has had no education in formal logic. For this reason, when a conditional statement is used in an argument, it is recommended that you should always clarify whether the conditional is meant to be interpreted as the material conditional. Now, back to the original topic. The first fallacy is called affirming the consequent. This is an argument in the following form. If P, then Q. Q, therefore, P. The name comes from the transition from the second premise to the conclusion, where the truth of the consequent Q is mistakenly used to deduce the truth of the antecedent. To see exactly why this reasoning is fallacious, consider the following example. The conditional statement, if X is a human, then X is a mammal, seems trivially true, since all humans are mammals. However, the converse is not necessarily true. For instance, my cat Jasper is a mammal, but that doesn't imply that Jasper is also a human. Here's another example. If it is raining outside, then the ground is wet. You look out the window and see that the ground is wet, so you deduce that it must be raining outside. Is this a valid deduction? No, because it could well be that your spiteful neighbor just spilt several buckets of water onto your yard to ruin your day. So, to avoid this fallacy, remember that a conditional statement is a one-way street. You can go from P to Q, but not the other way around. 
The second fallacy is called denying the antecedent. This is an argument in the following form. If P, then Q. Not P, therefore not Q. The name comes from the transition from the negation of the antecedent P to the negation of the consequent Q. To see why this reasoning is fallacious, consider the same examples from the previous section. If X is a human, then X is a mammal. My cat Jasper is not a human, therefore Jasper is not a mammal. This is clearly false, because all cats are mammals. Similarly, if it is raining outside, then the ground is wet. It's not raining outside, therefore the ground is not wet. As we saw earlier, rain is not the only thing that can cause the ground to be wet. This is the end of this episode. In the next episode, you will learn another formal fallacy.